Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going over some basic skills you're going to need for the Roots and Powers chapter in Math 10. We're going to be practicing uh, some of the skills you learned in your exponents unit back in Math 9. Uh, first we're just going to practice representing numbers in different formats using exponents and then evaluating them. So we have a table here that we need to complete. Feel free to stop the video at any time and try some on your own and then come back and check your answers. Uh, so when we have a repeated multiplication, so for example in this one, 4 times 4 times 4, if we write that in an exponential form, we would write 4, which we call the base, to the power of 3, because we multiplied 3 4s together. So that would be called the exponent. And the entire thing, 4 to the power of 3, uh, would be called the power. And to evaluate that, 4 times 4 times 4, uh, you just multiply the three fours together and it makes 64. Okay, next we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight twos. So this would be two, the base, to the power of eight, the exponent. And multiplying eight twos together also gives, or actually, multiplying, I was going to say 64, but I believe it's one, 256. Yeah, 256. Next, we have a negative um, number as our base. So the negative 11 is being multiplied twice. So to write that out as repeated multiplication, we would multiply it negative 11 twice. Now it's optional to include those brackets there, but it does help you read the expression better when you include the brackets, I think, but they are optional. Um, and just a reminder, when you multiply two negatives together, those negative signs do cancel out and you get a positive answer. So when we evaluate this, you'd get positive 121. Okay, next we have another negative base, negative 5. So that's our base and it's being multiplied four times. So the exponent there would be 4 and that happens to be positive 625. So again, when you're multiplying an even number of negative signs, these negative signs would cancel and then these negative signs would cancel. Okay, here we have a fraction, but it works the same way. So the base is th negative 3 over 10, and we're multiplying it 3 times. So to write that out in repeated multiplication, it would be negative 3 over 10 times negative 3 over 10, and we're going to do this 3 times, times negative 3 over 10. Okay, and when just also, when you multiply fractions, you just multiply the numerators and you multiply the denominators. So in the numerator of our final answer, we'll have 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. And in our denominator, we'll have 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. And this answer will be negative because those negative signs don't end up canceling out. The first two would cancel, but then we have a third one there that stays in the final answer. Okay, the last question, we have a numerical value as our answer, and we see it's a 1 with a bunch of zeros. I think there are seven zeros. Let me count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So I would recommend writing this as a power of 10. So we can use 7 as our exponent, and this would be just 10 times 10 times 10, 7 times. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. Okay. In the next table, we're going to be reviewing some of the exponent laws that you learned back in grade 9. So there were three exponent laws, so we're going to review all three here. The first exponent law is when you have, and these exponent laws are only true when you're working with an expression where the bases are the same. So notice here in our expression, the base numbers are the same. So when you're multiplying two powers where the bases are the same, we get to add the exponents. So this would be the same as 10 to the power of three plus five. 3 plus 5 is 8. So this would be 10 to the power of 8. So we added 3 and 5 together. So you do this anytime you're multiplying two powers where the bases are the same. And the actual value of this would just be 1 with 8 zeros behind it. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so 100 million. Okay, the next exponent law is for dividing, and it's kind of the opposite of multiplying. So instead of adding the two exponents together and notice the bases are the same again here we would subtract the exponents from each other so i'll just write here subtract so you do this anytime you are dividing two powers with the same base so we're going to use this law again down here you can see there's another division here 
Okay, so let's do it. Uh, so it would be 12 and 7 minus 5. You don't actually have to write that first step. I'm just showing it for clarity here. So, oh, sorry, I wrote 5, but I meant 2. Here we go. 7 minus 5 is actually 2. So that's what... Um, and now we can evaluate that. It would just be simply be 12 times 12, which is 144. Okay, and then the final law, there's only three exponent laws. The final law is when you have uh, just one base. See how there, there's one here, it's negative two, but then it's like a power of a power law. So you have an exponent here, and then that whole thing is all to the power of two. So when you have a power of a power, you wanna multiply the exponents together. So in this case, three times two. Okay, so this would be negative two to the power of three times two. Three times two is six, it would be negative two to the power of six. This is an even exponent. So we know that those negative signs are gonna cancel out and our final answer is gonna be positive. And if you multiply six twos together, you get 64. Okay, two more to go. Um, one of them is going to be the first law we saw back up at the top. We are multiplying two powers of the same base, so we're going to add the exponents. This time one of them is negative, but that doesn't change the law. We're still going to add those numbers together. So 10 plus negative 8 happens to be 2. So when we write this as a single power, it's going to be negative 7 to the power of 2 because we added those exponents. So we are multiplying negative 7 twice. So those negative signs are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with positive 49. And finally, the last law here, we have the same base and we are dividing two powers. So we are going to subtract those exponents. So we're going to subtract 34 minus 31, which happens to be 3. So as, as a single power, it would be negative 4 to the power of 3. And there you go. So that would be negative 64. These um, negative signs don't cancel in this case. Okay, because we're multiplying an odd number of them. All right, that was the exponent rules. The last review of exponents here we'll have on this page is just doing the order of operations with them. Mostly here, we're just practicing how to show our steps properly, um, one below each other, and evaluating the expression in the right order. So we always follow bed mass the acronym we use. So B stands for brackets, E stands for exponents, I'll just kind of write X squared. These two go together, dividing and multiplying, it's like whatever one comes first in the equation when you read it left to right, that's what you want to do first. And then finally, the last thing we'll do is add or subtract, okay? Okay, so in the first one here, we see there's some brackets, so what we want to do is eval evaluate inside the brackets first. Um, Within the brackets, we still have to follow bed mass. So what we're gonna do is, in those brackets, there's two operations there. We're gonna do the multiplication first. So here, let's write this. 36 divided by 15 minus 12 squared. We still have brackets, so we're gonna keep evaluating inside those brackets. And notice I'm writing each step on a new line with an equals, one equal sign per line. I like to tell students that that's kind of the rule. You wanna only use one equal sign per line when you're evaluating an, an expression. Okay, now we're done all the brackets. We're gonna move on to exponents. We're gonna evaluate this exponent here, three squared, which is nine. And finally, the last thing we'll do is evaluate the division. 36 divided by nine is four. And I box in my final answer. Okay, you don't have to do the highlighting, but you do have to show your steps one after another like that, and it really helps if you line it up with the one equal sign per line. Okay. Uh, this one here, we do have something inside brackets, so we're going to do that first. So we have a division here. Um, so 128 divided by 64 happens to be 2. And when you see a number like this written next to a bracket, that just means multiplication. So you actually could stick a little multiplication symbol in between there, but oftentimes like, we, we want to kind of avoid cluttering things up, so sometimes we leave that multiplication sign out just because we don't wanna like clutter an expression up with too many symbols. Anyways, you could put the multiplication in there. Okay, next we're gonna do the uh, exponents. So this would be negative two times eight. Two to the power of three is eight. 
And finally, we'll do that multiplication. Notice I did put a little dot there now, just because you wouldn't really want to write those numbers next to each other anymore, because then it would look like the number 28, which it isn't. It's 2 times 8. Okay, so negative 2 times 8 is our final thing that we're going to evaluate, and that's negative 16. Okay, finally, on the last page here, we're going to be doing a little bit of work in this chapter with squares and cubes, and so I just wanted to remind you how to take find the area and the volume of a cube area of a square volume of a cube and also determine their side lengths okay so for a square or any rectangle the area is always length times width and the area is like how much two-dimensional space the object sort of takes up so it's like what i'm shading in here um, in a square, the, area, the length and the width happen to be identical. So if we were going to do the area here, it would be 9 meters times 9 meters. You could also write this as 9 meters to the power of 2 because it's being multiplied twice. Both are correct. And that would be uh, 81, and we write meters squared because 2 meters were multiplied together there. So that would be the final answer. Make sure you have a little 2 up here next to your meters, those are the proper units. Okay, this one, I'm gonna use exponents just because we're gonna use exponents a lot in this chapter. So it'd be 15 centimeters squared. We're multiplying 15 centimeters with 15 centimeters. 15 times 15 is 225. It'd be 225 centimeters squared. And again, that's kind of a measure of how much space this square takes up. Okay, going backwards now. Now, what if you're given the area but you wanna find the side length? So what you want to do here in this case is think of a number that multiplies twice to make 25 here, for example, or 144 in example B. So essentially what that is, it's taking a square root. Um, so we're taking the square root of 25 centimeters squared. And since 5 times 5 is 25, the side length would be 5 centimeters. So this would be 5 centimeters, and this would be 5 centimeters here. That way, 5 times 5 is 25. Yeah, it all works out. Okay, over here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to think of two numbers that multiply to make 144. And what you're really doing there is taking the square root of 144, which happens to be 12. 12 meters is one side length, and 12 meters is the other side length. We're dealing with the square here, so both side lengths are going to be the same. Okay, volume is quite similar except there's going to be three dimensions to it. So volume is kind of like how much three-dimensional space an object takes up. So how much stuff will fit inside this object, essentially. Um, so the volume of any rectangular prism is going to be length times width times height. And for a cube, those all happen to be the same. So here, our volume will be 6 centimeters times 6 centimeters times 6 centimeters. A faster way to write this would just be six centimeters, since we've multiplied it three times, it just be six centimeters to the power of three. Um, and if we evaluate that, that's 216. And we write centimeters cubed. The reason we have a three here is because we've multiplied three different centimeter lengths together. Okay, uh, here, similarly, the volume would be four millimeters cubed. So four times four times four, length times width times height. 64 millimeters cubed. Okay, and then going backwards now, we have to think of three numbers, the length, the width, and the height. What times what times what equals eight centimeters cubed? So we have the volumes eight. We're trying to think of three numbers. They have to all be the same that multiply to make eight. What Essentially what you're doing here is you're doing the cube root of eight. So um, that would be 2. Since 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, the side length here would be 2. So this would be 2, this would be 2 centimeters, and this would be 2 centimeters. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. Okay, same thing over here. We're thinking of three numbers that multiply to make 216, and since all those numbers have to be the same, we're essentially doing the cube root of 216 which happens to be six. It's kind of the opposite of part A in question six. So 
we go. Okay, that's the end of the get ready assignment.